And with us is France 24's Clovis Casali. 24 hours ago, you were at the French National Assembly, where, as we're about to hear in a moment, it was kind it was of heated. a parallel conversation, right? A, an immigration bill uh, where the government faced a setback and got one. And with us from London, uh, Andrew Smith, uh, prof political scientist at uh, Queen Mary University. Thanks for being with us, Andrew. Thank you. L let me begin with you, uh, because uh, I don't know if you've been counting heads or... Uh, what are your thoughts? It's been since 1986, the last time that a bill that was uh, introduced in Parliament was defeated at the first go before uh, uh, it, it even got off the ground. Is Richie Sunak facing embarrassment? I think he's already uh, encountered quite a lot of embarrassment uh, with the uh, the way that the, the the debate has unfolded or you know failed to uh, to unfold. Um, I think in both cases, you know, as you see with uh, the discussion in France as well, and um, both of these are what you might call partial and incomplete bills that seem to satisfy precisely no one and be sacrificing quite a lot of political headway um, in order to achieve very little indeed. Uh, it really seems like the worst form of showmanship politics. Uh, designed in the British case, I think, to try and fight the next election and to try and get some kind of small victory um, through the Commons to show that the government can still do something. Let's talk about that timeline because uh, an election has to happen at the latest by January of 2025 in the UK, possibly next fall, possibly in about a year's time, we're not sure. Um, and, and so we've just had just a few weeks ago uh, Britain's highest court striking down the previous version of Richie Sunak's deportation bill. Why did he feel the need to introduce this so soon? Well, I think largely because he sees a window where he might be able to force it through. Um, the Conservatives are doing very poorly in the uh, the opinion polls. Uh, they are, you know, on, on current measures, they are they're set for an absolute wipeout. Uh, that's not necessarily because of, a, a, you know, resounding kind of fervor really for uh, for the, the opposition, for Labour, um, but really because of the perceived inefficacy and dysfunction um, of the, the current government. I think what Sunak's trying to do right now is in order to try and fulfill some of the promises um, that he came to power with, uh, is to essentially say to many of his backbenchers that don't want this bill in its current form, that don't want to support him on this, and who are indeed treating it as something of a confidence vote on their, uh, you know, on their leader, uh, him. Um, he's trying to say to them, look, you don't want uh, an election in February. I don't want an election in February. Let's kick this into the long grass. Let's win while we can. Um, and the hope that it might lead to some type of potential economic upturn in the new year, or at least some change in the polling. So for me, it is really about that idea of trying to secure a small win um, in the midst of really very grindingly depressing uh, poll data and, you know, uh, largely political outcomes uh, for the current government. If it fails, Andrew, uh, is he going to resign? Is he going to face a leadership contest? I doubt he'll resign, um, but I, he could potentially face a leadership contest, but I think it's unlikely... It's unlikely that they'll make him go at this stage. It is so close to an election that I think really the idea of another change would be drastic. There are, as ever, rumbles from some, the kind of constant bring back Boris refrain you hear from the fringes of the party has been playing in the background. But at this stage, that would surely look like an act of really rampant desperation. Um, this looks really like the best the Conservatives have to run with. And the hope is they can present themselves and somehow driving uh, uh, sort of into a landing strip between between uh, the very far right of their party, who are looking for much more extreme measures, uh, you know, represented by people like Suella Braveman, of course, the author of this original plan, and of course, those much more centrist One Nation grouping, and um, which Sunak's trying to appeal to in terms of watering this down. So it is really an act of party management and an electioneering, as much as it is, I think, of governance at this stage. All right, and when you count votes in the House of Commons, it's a mix between, as you put it, uh, the hard right, and as well, of course, uh, the, the, the opposition. So strong headwinds for Richie Sunak. And that kind of mirrors the mix we saw on Tuesday in the French Parliament, where because of a procedural vote introduced by the Greens, it was uh, the far right of Marine Le Pen siding with the left-wing opposition and defeating uh, the introduction uh, of an immigration reform bill. Vadika Bael has the story. It's a round of thunderous applause in the National Assembly as French MPs adopted a motion to reject the government's flagship immigration bill without even debating it. 
It's a huge setback for Macron's government and a victory for opposition groups on both the left and right. He wanted to defeat the interior minister, who's long been championing this proposal. It's been a year now that Interior Minister Darmanin has been pushing this law, so now he can pack up and leave. We are now asking this government to withdraw this law. The move to reject the bill was spearheaded by the Greens and also backed by the far-right national rally, with its leader, Marine Le Pen, delighted. This rejection we've seen tonight is a very powerful rejection. The controversial bill was intended to strengthen the country's ability to expel foreigners it deemed undesirable, increase restrictions on immigration and better integrate current migrants. But the rejection in Parliament does not mean the end of the bill. Macron's government can now decide to send it back to the upper house or ask a joint commission of senators and lawmakers to find a compromise. Or it could be abandoned altogether, though that would be embarrassing for the government. And you were at the National Assembly, Clovis Gazali, to witness, I guess we could call it mayhem on Tuesday. Uh, yeah. Has it been mayhem again this Wednesday? Uh, sorry, on Monday. Has it begin mayhem again this Tuesday? Well, yesterday it was all about the surprise. Nobody expected this vote to go through for the motion to pass. Let me tell you, I was talking to the, one of the leaders of the Green Party 10 minutes before the motion was voted. I asked him, what do you think? Will it pass? He's like, no way. It passed. Huge surprise. Uh, Emmanuel Macron, the French president, failed to mobilise his troops. Coming to today, questions to government, tensions running high. You had all the uh, main political parties um, asking questions to the government, asking you, you, questions... You to... had the interior minister uh, tender his resignation, which the, pri which the president rejected. Instead, it seems like it's the prime minister who's now in the hot seat. Well, they're both in the hot seat, to be fair. And there's a bit of a rivalry between Elisabeth Bonn and Gérald Darmanin, with uh, some people saying that the interior minister would like to become prime minister if there is a reshuffle in the future. You have the uh, French far right calling for um, early elections, fresh elections uh, for uh, the National Assembly, hoping they can get a majority. They're trying to uh, capitalize on this moment. This is pivotal. It's very, very rare for the French government to not be able, not to pass a law, but not even have a debate over a law. And that's exactly what happened. Emmanuel Macron has been talking to Agence France Presse, or at least his advisors, uh, saying that for him, the opposition showed cynicism, trying to prevent the French from having the debate that they want, a debate on immigration. The French government, the French president, convinced that this is an issue, a bit like in the UK, very important for uh, the uh, French people. The um, French government convinced that we are at a turning point regarding immigration and that something needs to be done. Isn't that a bit duplicitous? I ask the question because by um, submitting this motion, what the left is arguing is, in effect, what we were doing is cutting off at the past the government's ability to also cut off debate by turning it into a vote of confidence for the government, the famed Article 49.3 of the Constitution. It's true. The government just says you should have at least allowed the debate to happen because it wasn't about agreeing or not to the law, but agreeing to a debate. And then, according to the government, compromise could be made during uh, those two weeks um, period. I think you... Yep. No, I was, I was just going to say uh, regarding that, and I want to bring in Andrew Smith on yep. this, because, uh, a Andrew, what's going on? Why is it that both in France and in the UK... It's the, these immigration bills, which critics call grandstanding to a degree, that are uh, really causing huge headaches for uh, the governments in power. Yeah, I think uh, it, it's something which speaks to, I think, moment a, a moment of real instability, um, both in, in Britain and France, but really in the kind of wider international situation as well. And um, for me, it speaks to some uh, a profound lack of confidence, I think, in, uh, in, in the global economy. Why, why is, but to... why is immigration the, the issue that, 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 yeah. that, that, that governments can't, they, they want to be ahead of it, but they somehow aren't? 
I think back to you know Stefan Zweig when he talks about the the world of uh, the world of yesterday and the idea of you know what comes with tomorrow and this this idea that there is a certain kind of you know um, deglobalization that's happening, certain kind of you know isolationism growing, a ramping up of nationalism that breeds a fear of the foreigner. We know both in Britain and in France that you know immigration has largely been defined in terms of the debate as a racialized debate, one that deals largely with extra European immigration, that it's recurred really since the you know of course since France tightened the 1970s and Britain did at the same time throughout the 1980s it's become a kind of football really that people can play with in terms of you know discussing ideas of a, a threat to values a threat to kind of uh, national identity so i think in both cases what it represents is governments that are showing a sign of weakness in both cases we have these ideas of goldilocks politics trying to court this idea of fragile kind of visions of national identity with restating sovereign control and i think this is really where the problem is you know for macron of course it's too hard for the greens to uh, to soft for the far right, for Sunak, really the same thing in terms of managing his own party. And I think what we see here is a moment that actually represents really a, a sense of crisis of vision um, within the context of what's happening in France. It's about the vision of Macronism. It's about a confidence in terms of that regime going forward. And really, it's about the idea of immobilism in the face of that. So like you say, denying debate on this issue becomes something that is then going to spill out into the streets. And for me, that's the danger. 1930s politics can breed 1930s street politics. And for me, that's always a danger when you start to engage in these types of discussions. Andrew Smith, many thanks for joining us from London. I want to thank you, uh, Clovis Casali. Much more on this topic on our website, France24.com.